Compromise is the easy way. I love when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Feel so intrigued. So I knew that what the Lord had revealed this morning, because after you left, I felt led to come in here and take the next shift, which usually doesn't happen. So I was here from like 11 to, I don't know, 2 o'clock and just praying. And I sat there in the couch, just waiting and hearing. And then the Lord revealed something to me. And this song came forth. And I started singing that out around this area. And I'm going to, I wrote it down, which is interesting because it goes with a lot of what David was saying. And so I saw an angel, obviously. We've seen angels lately, and there is reason for this, because angels are the helpers to the hairs of salvation. They assist us in bringing forth God's will on earth, but that's not common for people to actually activate and live with knowing that their angels are here to assist us. So we live as if there's no existence of that assistance. So I see this angel and I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, we're always seeing angels now, Lord, what's going on? But I sense frustration. I sense a frustration, but not like an earthly frustration, but a frustration as if someone is on duty and there has to be a fulfillment of that assignment and it was a continuous disappointment of having to go through the duty without the completions of these assignments, which in Isaiah is that God's word does not come back void. Okay? So, so this song comes out and it says, the angels gathered all around waiting for the sound. Now, the sound is the word, okay? So the angels gathered all around waiting for the sound so heaven can completely abound. They must become the sound, which do we know that the sound is the word. Living word of God so that the angels can assist us in our lives, in our destiny. So I saw the angel. It was frustrated and disappointed. I saw people who didn't listen and didn't pursue God's dream. That's why when you said God's dream, I knew that there was that connection because we do not pursue God's dream for our life. That's true. We pursue our own dream. Okay. And then what happens is you don't get the fulfillment of your destiny. I'm sorry. You've gotten what you wanted that inheritance but the inheritance of god that is the dream of god for our life and we never ask god god what's your dream for my life instead i say god this is what i'm dreaming you follow up bless it, bless it. favor it god and you know it's such a disappointment because our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. So that means I'm thinking not like God. I'm, I, why? Because it's not his way. It's not his thoughts. That's why I'm asking God, what is your dream for my life? Because that way he implants the seed of his way and his thoughts. So... So the word of the Lord, not fulfilled on the earth for the hairs of salvation is what I was seeing. And the more I sang this song and all the words came forth, the more I knew that we must become the sound. What am I saying? We must become the word. That's right. That's good. We must become the word. And that's what the Lord was saying. You must become the word. And then, okay, so. So. So they were waiting for the sound 
They're waiting for the sound of this house to move so that they can help us in the destiny of our lives. But we must become the word. Um, can you give me my Bible really quick or give me my tablet, please? So, of course, my favorite scripture, one of many, but really my favorite scripture, John chapter 1-1. One, one. Oh, you know. In the beginning, there was the word, and the word was with God. I love that scripture. I just love that scripture. I've always loved that scripture because it just reveals Jesus in the beginning. So it says, it, it says the word became flesh. The word became flesh. So it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. And through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life, oh, I can feel it all over me, was the light of all mankind. Oh, I could feel it when I when I recite this word. When I recite this word, it makes my flesh manifest. Why? Because I'm overpowering it with the word. So when I recite this, in the beginning, there was the word. And it was with God. And the word was God. And he was there in the beginning. And with all, and my baby leaps. I can feel it in my spirit. It, my womb is moving. When I make this profound declaration, in him was life, that that life was the light of all mankind. What I like about that too is that from John chapter 1 1, you get Genesis, Genesis chapter 1 1 in the beginning. <laughs> so he was there. But. I love that greatness part, but the part that I guess we have to ask the Lord was what's keeping us from becoming the word. I have to ask, you can't, Lord, you just don't give so that I do not ask. You said ask, right? You said you have to ask. God loves that question, that dialogue. Let's, let's get together and talk about this. So here we're having a conversation with the Lord, Lord, what are you saying? And it's it's funny because he's like, I just want my will for your life to be so much bigger than you could even imagine. Ah, oh, I get the chilies in my back. Because when he when I hear this, when I hear this coming from God, it's like, oh, like I can't even imagine. That means I've never thought of it. That means I haven't set my mind or practice in the spirit to find it. What am I doing? We must become the sound. We must become the sound. And the angels are waiting around so that heaven can come to this place. How? By the living stones. Living stone, living stone. Do you understand that when the Holy Spirit, okay, Holy Spirit resides in us, but when we come together, there should be a power surge in this place. Why? Because now Holy Spirit has something to maneuver with. Holy Spirit is designed in our gatherings to come in and out as it pleases amongst the men. And people will say, this is what bucks me out. You know, you have your, you have your little, little, okay. When we say, Holy Spirit, we invite you here. <laughs> Thank you. What? I'm not agreeing to that. Because that is a statement that says, I am not with you. Right. And that is a statement that says, we have not been together. But here we are, all of us together. And because we have not had a relationship with the Holy Spirit, we're going to invite you here. And it, it's like, the people who you believe is so proud, you know, profound in the word, studied out, so mature, they, and then this comes out of their mouth. 
Holy Spirit, we invite you here. I don't need to invite. Holy Spirit is and dwells in us. I am not inviting. I'm saying, Holy Spirit, have your way. Right? It's a change of mindset. You're going to change your mindset. Because that Holy Spirit, we invite you here. It's like everyone's waiting for the Holy Spirit to do something. But Holy Spirit's dwelling amongst us. So when we come together, all you, I'm, I'm expecting to see a move of the Holy Spirit. Not because it's invited, because it dwells. Oh, I, David, you're fired up in the spirit. <laughs> He's like, I'm fi there's a fire. There's that aura of fire around him. But it's always that way, huh? <laughs> it's just this time it's like, it's visible. <laughs> And you know why? Because I'm speaking about something he can relate to, Holy Spirit. Only people that know the Holy Spirit will, keep, will feel that fire. Okay. So let's go to Romans chapter 8, of course, right? Because we must become the Word. And this is all David's talking about, the Word. How do you get there? Through intimacy. Through, to, through being with him. Okay. So if you go to chapter 8, of course, we know this, chapter verse 29. Everybody should know this because it's constantly pounded in your head. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Okay. Conforming to the image of Jesus in the beginning, he was the word. And the word was with God. This is where people get crazy and say, oh, don't start that word of faith movement. But the word of faith movement became a movement, not a moment. However way that movement started is because it started with everything we were going to say in the word. And when the word of God is present, there's movement. When the word of God becomes your lifestyle, your actual living out, practicing, practicing the word of God. What does that mean? That means we're conforming to be the word. Whatever the word says, that's what we must be. 